Today, I'm flying Cathay Pacific business class from London to Hong Kong. I haven't flown Cathay since way before the pandemic, so I'll be interested to see how the service has held up. My return journey, which included a connecting flight to Singapore, cost £3,158. The flight departed from Heathrow Terminal 3, where Cathay shares check-in zone C with other One World members. There was a dedicated business class check-in desk, but there weren't any queues at all. The baggage allowance was the standard business class allowance of two check bags weighing up to 32 kilos, a cabin bag weighing up to 10 kilos, and a personal item such as a handbag or laptop case. From check-in you went upstairs to security. There was a fast track security line for business class passengers. Although there was a bit of a queue, this moved quickly as new scanners had been installed with no need to remove items such as laptops. From fast track security you entered the main departure lounge, bypassing duty free shops. Then it was a short walk to the Cafe Pacific lounge. As I had a BA Gold Card, I was allowed access to the first class section of the lounge. The lounge was airy, with floor to ceiling windows looking out over the airfield. A full bar, including a choice of champagnes, was available. I opted for Laurent Perrier. The lounge was fairly quiet. There was a dining room offering a range of dishes. Some breakfast snacks were laid out on another counter. From the lounge, it was about a 10 minute walk to the gate. On arrival at the gate, there was a priority lane for business and first class passengers. The flight was on a Boeing 777-300 extended range aircraft Registration, Bravo, Kilo, Papa, Romeo. It was 13 years old. First class passengers and One World Emerald, such as BA Gold, got to board firstly, then business class. We boarded the aircraft through door one and walked through first class to get to business class. Business class was located in the back half of the first cabin and the whole of the second cabin. There were 53 seats in a 1 to 1 configuration. I was in seat 17K. The seat was a Saffron Cyrus 2. It had a width of 20 inches and could recline to form a fully flat bed, six foot seven inches in length. There was a storage compartment next to the seat. Alongside a controller for the seat, a reading lamp, power socket and USB, plus some old school AV inputs. There was plenty of leg room. Another storage compartment was alongside the seat at floor level. The amenity kit included lotion, hydrating face mist, mouthwash, toothbrush and toothpaste, lip balm and earplugs, plus a fairly soft eye mask. 
pre-flight, juice, water or champagne were offered. If you're enjoying the review, please subscribe to Doors to Auto for future reviews. A hot towel was offered. And then the safety video was played. From the moment you begin your journey, we're here to make the experience effortlessly smooth and enjoyable. Because your safety is important to us, please take a few minutes to watch our video. We pushed back about 30 minutes behind schedule for a short taxi to runway 27 left. The flight time was scheduled to be 12 hours 35 minutes, but today we were expecting a slightly shorter journey at 12 hours and 5 minutes. The in-flight entertainment system had a 16-inch touchscreen. The selection of content wasn't as good as other airlines and the touchscreen was a bit temperamental. Good quality headphones were provided. Wi-Fi was available for 20 US dollars for the whole flight. There were good download speeds up to 40 megabits per second. The main meal included a choice of two starters, five main courses, cheese and four desserts. The main courses could be pre-ordered online. A tablecloth was laid and then a glass of red wine and an amuse-bouche, which was a prawn and some salsa. A tray was then laid. A selection of bread, including garlic bread, was available. For the starter, I opted for the white zucchini soup with croutons and fresh herbs. It was a good, light option. For main course, I chose the braised beef cheek with horseradish dumplings, beans and potato puree. It was accompanied by a leaf salad and balsamic vinaigrette. I particularly enjoyed the horseradish dumplings, but the whole course was very good. After the main course, the tray was cleared away. Then there was a bit of a wait before the dessert trolley came around. There was a good wine selection with champagne, a white burgundy and Sauvignon Blanc, a Medoc and a Barossa Valley Shiraz. Cocktails and spirits were also available. From the trolley, I opted for the cheese plate and a chocolate mousse with strawberries. The meal concluded, a selection of pralines were offered. A selection of other dishes, including a beef burger, were available throughout the flight. There were three toilets for business class, all located between the cabins. One of the toilets was designed for use by disabled passengers, so was bigger. Bamford hand wash and lotion were provided. There was also a changing mat. The other bathrooms were cosier. Back in the cabin, a duvet and seat cover were provided. The duvet was soft. The seat cover was pretty thin and wasn't a mattress topper. The seat reclined to form a flat bed, which you could make up yourself. At 20 inches wide, the bed felt quite restrictive. There was no door, leaving your bed open to the aisle. 
There were no overhead air vents and the cabin got pretty warm overnight. The morning started with another hot towel and then breakfast was served. There were four options to choose from, plus an express breakfast. I opted for the Western breakfast, which was a tomato and cheddar omelette with bacon, mushroom and potato. It was served with fresh fruit and warm pastries. The breakfast tasted really good. We soon started to prepare for our landing in Hong Kong. So what did I make of the flight? The seat was okay. It was comfortable, but quite narrow. There was plenty of storage space around the seat. The entertainment system was a bit sluggish and the content could do with being refreshed. The food was very good. The service was efficient, but at times felt very process-driven and not particularly personal. Was it worth the cost of £3,150? Considering the flight was more than 12 hours and the price included a four-hour connecting flight, I think it was money well spent. But let me know what you think. Do you think it was value for money? Comment away, like and share the review. And please do subscribe to Doors to Auto for future reviews.